You want to go from this to this. Stick around. I'm going to show you how to remove rust from cast iron safely. I've got a rusty skillet or a rusty Dutch oven. Can you save it? First of all, there's one important thing you need to know. That is, does it say made in the USA? Stuff that is foreign, a lot of times it's going to warp, it's going to crack. You're not even going to get the rust out of it when you take care of it. So my advice to you, if you have one of them, you have a brand new dog food bowl and it works well. So say you go to garage sale, flea market, make sure it doesn't have a crack in it first before you start. Now sometimes them are hard to see till you get some of that out, but when you begin to work and if you see a crack run across there or a big chip or something out of it, Hey, don't waste your time. You can research on that deal. You've all heard me say the Google that Shannon just wears me out on. Get on the Google. You can find, ain't no telling how many methods to get rust out of there. There's electrolysis, there's sandblasting, and there's even spray some oven cleaner on it. Oven cleaner in a skillet or a Dutch oven ain't gonna happen. Because remember what I said, if you can't ingest it, don't put it in that cast iron. So rule that one out. Now electrolysis, it is a good method, but you gotta have some apparatus equipment to get this all done. You're gonna have to have you a big old plastic water tub, a piece of metal that comes down one side, go steal the neighbor's car battery or a car charger, one of the two. Does it work? Yeah, but it's a lot of trouble, I think, at times. Sandblasting, I know a lot of people that have done it, but you've got to be really careful, especially if it's an old, old skillet or something you're trying to bring back. You can pit that stuff. We are going to show you a step-by-step -step process of how we safely get rust out of cast iron. So let's head on out to the wagon and let's get it done. What we got here is probably the greatest disease cast iron ever caught in its life. It's just going to take you a little time. You can't give up. It didn't get rusty in one day. You might not fix it in one day. Have you got a cordless drill? They sell a little wire brush that'll hook right on that drill. Bring it back. Run it in here. Sides, bottom, top, everywhere. That's always my first step. Get a wire brush that maybe looks something like this. But it's better if you can get a small one. Because you got to get in here to be able to work. This one is nearly too big. So if you can find you one of them little old wire brushes, and I've seen them at Walmart, I've seen them everywhere, just go to scrubbing this deal with a wire brush because you're going to need to get some kind of abrasive activity to get that rust out. So what's going to be the next step? Rinse it out, hot water, set it on your burner, set it on a heat source, set it on a campfire, something, but we've got to dry that water out before we can start. Get it over here where you can work on it, and let's get some sea salt coarse sea salt just slip it in there now you can do this one or two ways you can take you a half a potato now and sit on there and go to rubbing or you can just use you any piece of old leather that once white salt it's rusty red now we eating at some of that rust we're going to dump this out folks we have got the good out of that batch you got to rinse it out which ain't going to take much water then we're going to have to dry it out over here on old bertha and at this point, hey, you want to get you one of these here scratcher sponges? We just need to make sure that we take loose all that's there, and then we're going to start this process over again. So let's take it over at Old Bertha. Let's let her dry that water moisture out of there, and we're going to start over this time. But with that salt, we're going to add just a tad bit of oil so we've got a little lubricant in there with that salt. Well, folks, oh, it's sort of warm. Uh, Bertha got this dried out a little, so... They still rust in there. I ain't going to eat out of this thing yet. Bertha got it warm and dried out. We're going to add just a tad of vegetable oil. Any cheap oil you got, not pins oil. Can't do this cold. Can't do it smoking hot, but it's got to be warm. So we're going to add just a tad bit of oil. Don't take much. We're going to add us some more of this coarse sea salt in there. And I would say cover the bottom really well. And let's get to scratching. That lubricant... It's going to help that salt get down in there a little deeper. And being as how it's warm, that's going to help also. You want to make sure you get up on the sides too and everywhere. Let's get rid of that salt that we can. Don't do this in the kitchen floor. Your wife will be mad, I promise. Go back with a little water. I like to use warm water. Not hot, hot, but warm. It's going to help get that oil out of there plus that salt. This cleaned up pretty good. You were impressed, right? I was, you know. 
this was minimal rust damage. Now, a lot of times you find one of these and you get it to where you can sort of clean it up a little and then you begin to notice, can you see them little spots that's flaked off there? But there's some rust under here that was hidden, I promise you. This thing was not cleaned properly, didn't get the rust out of it to begin with when somebody went to re-seasoning it the first time. Seasoning is flaking off the original stuff here. Let's change tactics here. Baking soda. It's just warm in there. White vinegar. We got this vinegar and this soda in here. It was fizzing a while ago. I think it's about run out of fizz now. No, there's still a little more in there. As long as it's doing that, I know it's still working a little. So we're going to let this set about 10 minutes. I'll take me a little old soft bristle bush or maybe a piece of sponge. And I'll just get in there and go to scrubbing where this soda and this vinegar's been to try to loosen some more of that rust. And the water's sort of turning a rusty color again. When I rinsed it all out with good warm water, that's when I noticed this thing was in worse shape than I thought it was. There's still some really deep pockets of rust. Warm it up gradually, just let it get good and warm. Then I'm just gonna pour straight vinegar in it, about that deep. Let it come up above all that rust. I'm gonna let it soak 30 minutes maybe, 45. Take the rough side of that sponge and I'm gonna get in there and I notice when it's doing that, you can see that rust turning loose, coming out that vinegar done its job. So folks, you've seen me do some steps, but those were for some minimal rust care to maybe medium, mediocre kind of stuff. You've got this old piece, it's really bad. I mean, it is covered with rust and you don't think it can be saved. Now there is two methods you can go about this if you get to one of them to where it's this bad to begin with. Number one, self-cleaning oven. Now, nearly all new ovens have this. Some of the older styles don't. Put it on a cookie sheet, slip it in there in that oven, try to stay on a middle rack if you can lock that door, let it run its course. It is burning everything out of there. You're gonna get rid of the any old seasoning, any contaminants that might be in there, that thing has come out purified, solid raw piece of iron. Now there's another method, cause a lot of times I ain't got a self-cleaning oven out there where I'm at on the ranch or something. And I don't recommend this for everyone, I promise you, especially if you've got an old piece of iron or it's thin or something like that. But I just open that door on Bertha, chunk it in there, shut the door and say, full cycle, Bertha. Let her run about 30 minutes, drag it out there. If it is a good piece of iron that's got some thickness and some quality to it, it will live through that. But like just coming out of that self-cleaning oven, that thing is pure, raw, bare cast. Now, I'm gonna let that thing cool off a minute, take a wire brush to it, get it brushed out best we can and see where we're at. Got it wire brushed, got it cleaned up, there might be a pocket of rust that's still deep living down in there or something that didn't just surface plumb out. What are we gonna do? I'm gonna go back with a little sea salt, coarse, a little bit of oil, give it a good scrubbing, rinse it out, dry it out, heat it up, see where we're at. And if you go through this process and you still got it, use, use some vinegar and some baking soda let it sit in there, give it a little scrubbing. That'll get the job done. I hadn't burned out that skillet and that rust was so bad in there and so deep. I went back to the baking soda and vinegar deal again and again to try to get this to where we're at now. So let's have a look. All right, as you can see folks, you can actually see the silver back in this cast. We got back down to nearly the pure state of this cast iron. It's a little rough in there. Before we start the re-seasoning process, I'm gonna go in there with some 80 grit sandpaper and I'm just, it ain't gonna take much. You can do it by hand. If you got a little orbital sand or anything, just smooth this bottom up just a little, just to make sure it's good and smooth. Hope you learned something today. I did, every time I pick up a piece of cast iron, I learned something. Depending on your rust, you ought not have no more than two days in it to get it back to looking like it's supposed to. It's a lot like children and little dogs. You have to be patient with it. It's gonna bring you back that love that you're gonna need to cook out of for a lifetime. One of the things that I think is most important in this is to keep your iron as warm as you can and still handle it and not just burn you up. I don't want it smoking hot, but when you get that iron warm like that, it's gonna clean up easier and faster. If it's a good piece of iron, it ain't got no crack in it, with love, patience, and a little work, you can have that thing looking like brand new again and it will serve you forever. Cast iron's like an investment. The more you put into it, the more it's gonna give back to you can be handed down from generation to generation. After you've got all this rust out of there, be sure and look below, there is a link there 
that's going to show you how to start back to resurface this cast iron to its smoothing goodness. We want to thank you for stopping by the barn and the wagon today. Me and Shan don't take it for granted that you've been watching these. Tell your friends and neighbors, hey, y'all to check that feller's channel out. Him and his wife and them dogs got a good thing going. Thank you. God bless you. And have a great day above the grass.